Hi, nurslings. In this video, we're gonna go through the glucagon insulin feedback loop. This is kind of the backbone of understanding the pathophysiology of diabetes. If you're having a hard time with anything in this video, feel free to go back and look at the earlier videos I did on insulin, on insulin production and insulin usage in the body and also on counter-regulatory hormones. Most of the meat of what you need to know is in those videos. This one is just gonna give you a quick overview of what the feedback loop looks like. But when we think of the pathophysiology of diabetes type 1 and type 2, this is usually what we imagine or what we think of, this glucagon insulin feedback loop. So I'm going to go over it really, really quickly. Um, if you're struggling with any of these concepts, make sure you go back and check out the video that I did on what insulin does in the body. It will really, really help to kind of solidify some of the details behind what we're going to talk about. So this, uh, this is a very basic feedback system. Super, super easy to understand. We know that uh, glucagon and insulin are responsible for controlling the levels of glucose in our blood. And so when we're at a homeostatic level of glucose, we have a, a, the normal amount of glucose in our blood. Everything is good. This is um, an American picture. So let's say, you know, it's nice, nice. It's between four and seven, happy. So when there's an imbalance, for example, when the, the blood glucose increases, and again, this happens just when you eat, sometimes it can happen um, when you're experiencing a fight or flight response to something, um, your glucose can also increase when uh, you're experiencing an infection or illness. So for whatever reason, the glucose has increased in the blood. What that does is it stimulates the pancreas to start to release insulin. That insulin comes from the beta cells in the pancreas. That insulin is then gonna go out into the body, into the blood, and it's going to do two different things. The first thing it's gonna do is it's going to act as a key at the cellular level to kind of open the door for glucose to enter into the muscle cells and the fat cells. Um, again, if you want to go back and check out uh, the GLUT4 receptor video or any of the other videos, it can explain in a little bit more detail. So the other thing that insulin does when it's into the, in the bloodstream is it has an effect on the liver. It actually takes some of that extra glucose that's in the blood and it strings it together into this nice little chain called glycogen. So you have one glucose, you string them all together like this, and now we have glycogen. With that glycogen is then stored in the liver. So insulin, because it loves, loves, loves to take glucose out of the blood, those are kind of the main things it's doing. It's helping the body to use the glucose in the cells for cellular metabolism and it's also storing the extra glucose in the liver as glycogen. Once that happens, um, you know, the glucose level in the blood starts to go down and we get back to kind of where we are at a homeostatic level. A very similar thing happens if we have a decrease in insulin. So we're hypoglycemic. Number of reasons for that happening. Um, the most common is just missing a meal. And so, we have low blood glucose. This is uh, gonna be detected by the pancreatic cells. The pancreas is going to release, now instead of releasing insulin from the beta cell, it's gonna release glucagon from the alpha cells. That glucagon is then going to trigger the liver to do the opposite thing that the insulin just did. So it's gonna take those nice little chains of, of glycogen that the insulin has strung together and stored in the liver, and it's gonna break them apart and turn them back into glucose. And then that glucose is gonna head back out into the bloodstream and it's going to raise your blood glucose level. It's a really, really simple feedback loop system. There's 
Um, nothing complicated about it, unlike some of the other feedback systems we've learned about. Um, so if you're having any trouble kind of grasping that and you want to understand a little bit more, I really encourage you to go back and check out some of the earlier videos in this playlist.